me, aren't you? No. Yes, yes, admitted you are tired of me. I can tell by the way, by the way you moon over my daughter, over son. Nonsense. You like her. Oh. She's a child. She's a big. Liar. I am no. Coward. I am not a coward. No, me then. Arrest the prophet. I demand that you arrest him. Demand? Demand? That's a strong word, my heart. You must remember. John is right. By the laws of Moses, we have sinned. Come on, come on. <laughs> we have sinned. And we go on sinning. And very pleasant it is too. <laughs> Even if I wanted to, I could do nothing about his reproaches until he once more sets foot in Galilee. And then, my own, my heart, We'll throw him into prison. <laughs> repent, repent, <laughs> repent. <laughs> A little repenting won't do him any harm, eh? After all, he preaches it. Rabbi, we have been sent by the Sanhedrin of Jerusalem, amongst whom you have many friends and admirers. They understood why you could not come to the temple. It would have been wrong for you to abandon your mission even for a single day. The reason for the invitation was to ask you one simple question. Who are you? Yes. I will say who I am not. I am not the Messiah. The Messiah is yet to come. Then in the name of the living God, who are you? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. If you are not the Messiah or the prophet Elijah, by whose authority do you baptize? By the authority of him who shall come after me, whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His rod is in his hand and with it he will cleanse the threshing floor. returneth to the earth as it was. And the Spirit returneth unto God who gave it.
Jesus. We have always known it was not for us that Jesus came to earth. If only I could have stayed a little longer. God's will be done. spirit. Out of my distress, I cried to the Lord and he answered me. I cried and he heard my voice. I went down into the cities underneath the earth to the peoples of the past. But he lifted my life from the grave. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God, the Lord is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. If you truly mean it in your heart. Open up your heart. Be ready for the coming of the kingdom. Let your heart now be cleansed. Forgive me. I have sinned. Help me to be strong. Be strong. from you. And yet you come to me. Let it be so. We must fulfill all righteousness. Eternal Father, I hear your voice. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Born to a new life. 
life through your repentance. And the Lord pours his blessings on you. The Lord rejoices in repentant hearts. This water cleanses. Andrew, Philip, behold the Lamb of God who takes unto himself the sins of the world. It is him you must follow now, not me. He must increase, as I must decrease. He went straight to the synagogue. I saw him. He's back. And now, our reading from the prophets. The prophet Isaiah. Uh, no, who, is, who is our reader? Oh, yes, it's my son, today, Rabbi. Uh, <coughs> Isn't that Joseph's son? Yes. Joseph the carpenter. The carpenter. God rest his soul. <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to give good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to give sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Today, in your hearing, the scriptures are fulfilled. Scriptures are fulfilled. Did he say fulfilled? But how can he dare to say such a thing? What do you mean? The prophecy you have read can only be fulfilled by the coming of the Messiah. Yes. Right. By the coming of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God comes not in a way foreseen by men. Repent and believe the good news. 
the kingdom of heaven. Behold, is suddenly upon you. What? <laughs> Rabbi, take the scriptures away from him. He is a blasphemer. He defiles them by touching them. He shouldn't touch them with his unclean hands. <laughs> I've heard things about you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A prophet is never accepted in his own country. Who do you think you are? John, the prophet? You should be thrown out of this holy place. Get out of here. Blasphema? Blessed is he who is not ashamed of me. Today, in our hearing, the scriptures are fulfilled. What? What's happening inside the synagogue? Let's go and see. They're making an awful noise. You must stop them. You cannot let this happen. Rabbi, they don't understand who this man is. Andrew. There is no place for him here. He is unworthy. Rabbi, this man is not Messiah. No way, no way. Never come back to Lazarus. Don't let him go. Blasphemer. We were told to make ourselves known to you. I am Andrew of Capernaum, a fisherman by trade. But your follower now, if you'll take me. This is Philip. We were sent by John the prophet, the Baptist. He has just been imprisoned by King Herod Antipas. Andrew. Come with me. Come on. Come on. Tell me, when was John arrested? As soon as he returned to Galilee. He had to return. Too many people were waiting for him on the Jordan. There it is. The Sea of Galilee. And Capernaum, where I was born. It's a town of fishermen. But it also has the greatest synagogue in Israel. You can stay at my brother's house. He's a good man. Simon Peter. The commandments God gave to Moses so long ago must not remain dead stone for the reverence of unthinking minds. Dead stone? The tablets of the law? Dead stone? What do you mean, Rabbi? Stone is what the law is written on. For the law itself is alive. And living things are constantly changing. But our law is eternal. You, you cannot change, change the law of Moses. No. That's right, the law is here. A man is made of flesh and blood. And he changes. Doesn't he remain the same man? 
God wants to write the law on your hearts. Rabbi, you said you have come here to give us the good news. Is this it? The good news? That the law is living like a man? The good news I bring you is this. Your captivity is over. Now, what does that mean, our captivity is over? What captivity? Captivity in sin. God fulfills the promise he made to our people Israel and reconciles himself to man. God is coming to you. To all of you. Even the most wretched. Do not shut the door in his face. Demon has always tried to throw him into fire and into water to destroy him. <laughs> if you could do anything, have mercy. Help my poor thing. <laughs> Andrew here knows us well, but I was sent off to learn. All you were fit for, perhaps. And what have you learned? Oh, that two and two make four, sometimes. That most people seem to be here to be pushed about. That getting on is a fine thing. That birth is the beginning of death. But there must be something more for man between birth and death. Today, when I heard you preaching, I began to understand, and it gave me hope. Through your words, the old scriptures seem to become alive. That's what we want. We want the law to be alive, written in our hearts, not 
carved in stone. What is your name? John, son of Zebedee. John, stay with us. There's my brother now, Simon Peter. And there's my brother, James. He's shouting again, angry as usual. If anyone's drunk, it's you, you sponge. He doesn't mean it. He's a good man. What's the matter, brother? Poor catch? Poor catch? Nothing. The only things we catch these days are Roman taxes. And while we're out sweating, working our hands raw on the nets, the sticky tax gatherers take that and give it to the Romans, blood suckers. Go, brother. Go and tell that leech, that two-faced tax collector of ours, Matthew, that if he wants more money out of me, to put the fish in the lake. Simon, this is the man I told you about. The man John spoke of. John the Baptist. What? Another holy man? Are you another of those that tell us to be patient and promise us better times will be ahead? What about now? What about our children? Who will fill their bellies? A lot of talk these days while we all starve. Find a holy man who can put an end to that. Then maybe I'll listen. Go out again. I shall come with you. We've just pulled in! Get the nets off the boat! Please, Simon, do as he says. Why do you always listen to these people? Who knows the life better than Simon. I? Please! Please! It's not a miracle. 
Only God can work miracles. They speak these profanities, they believe him. We must go and speak. By a prophet, what's his name? Jesus, get out. He's staying with Simon Peter. You know him, the fisherman? Do I know him? Yes. He owes me back taxes, doesn't he? Move! Yes, yes. I've never been there, but my father's house. Well, well, well. Well, if there's been a big catch, he can pay, can't he? The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. A man finds it, and in his joy spends everything he has to buy that field. It's like a merchant in search of fine pearls. He finds one pearl of great value and sells everything to have that pearl. You, you're all fishermen. Well, the kingdom of heaven is like a net, a great net thrown into the sea. Suddenly it is filled. It's almost bursting. You have to call to the other boats to come and help. Everybody's working together. Happy. Excited. It's a time for joy. For rejoicing in what God has freely given. But one day... God will ask you to account for the gift he has given. Be prepared. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Rabbi, you say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But when exactly will it come? When you see the clouds moving from the east, you say the rain is coming. And so it is. When the desert wind blows, you say it'll be hot. And it is. All of you can read the signs of the earth and the sky. How is it you can't read the signs of the times? The kingdom of heaven is here. Now. What's he doing here? It's Matthew, the tax collector. Get him out. Peter, your friend, Matthew is here. Get out. You're defiling this house. Blood sucking tax collector. No place for you here. Out of my house! You stop! Help! Who, Simon? Don't. I will not have Simon. it defiled by you! Simon. I hear you've had a big catch, Simon. We'll talk about it later, shall we? But what about this friend of yours? This new preacher or teacher or whatever he is? Am I not allowed to speak with him? 
not in my house. You seem to be most unwelcome here. I don't know your name. But I know what you do. Levi. Or Matthew. I'm known by both names. And by others. <laughs> I see you and I must meet in a place where both of us are welcome. Is your own house far? Why do you ask? I should like to have supper with you tonight. You would enter the house of a sinner. I would enter any house where I am welcome. Help me. I've been this way for 20 years. It is the curse of God. Punishment for my sins and for my parents' sins. Your sins are forgiven you. Rabbi, you must not speak so. That's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Which of these is easier? To say your sins are forgiven you? Or rise up and walk home? The Son of Man has the power to forgive sins. Rise and walk home. He doesn't seem to realize the scandal it would cause. Peter, you tell him. I've told him. Well, tell him again. The whole place is talking about it. Meaning some Pharisees, I suppose. Well, they know the law. Tax collectors cannot even enter the synagogue, and anyone who associates with them is as defiled as they are. Yes, according to the Pharisees. Well, yes. Well, that's their argument. Peter, tell him I've again. I've told him! What do you want from me? I said Matthew's my blood-sucking enemy. I hate Matthew, but all Jesus would say is, well, well why don't you join us as well? Andrew. Andrew, I'm not like you. I'm not a follower of priests and prophets. I'm a fisherman. I have my family to think of. You follow the Baptist? Now follow this one. 
Peter! Just leave me alone! Why did you bring him here to me? This is my life! My nets. <laughs> My boats. Go on! Follow him! Believe me! Come on. You can't talk to him when he's like this. Come on, Philip. This is where I belong. Master! It's a scandal for you to eat with these people. Don't you know who they are? We've lived our lives honorably, made sacrifices to keep the law. They are thieves, whores, usurers, violent and godless people. And now you sit and eat with such people who spend their lives in orgies and perversions. I'm not come to call the virtuous to repentance, but the sinners. And they might enter the kingdom of heaven even before you. Listen, master, if you go and eat with these people, they will contaminate you. The whole town will abandon you. Oh, James is right. James. The heart of the law is mercy. You can't. You can't. Don't. <laughs> Peace be with you. Thank you for coming to my house. Rabbi, you are welcome. Welcome, Rabbi. No, 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 don't move, I'll sit down. Why? This is my brother James. He's in the same business as I am. I drink to you in the name of all here. I want to hear your words. Please, speak to us. No, 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 let's see first. No, let him decide. Oh, 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 let <laughs> A certain man had two sons. And one day the younger of these sons said to his father, Give me my share of your estate now. So his father divided his wealth between his two sons. And a few days later, this younger son set off for a distant land. And there, he squandered all the money he had on riotous living. Now, not long after this, a great famine swept over the land. And the boy began to starve. 
He persuaded a farmer to hire him to feed his pigs. But he was so hungry that even the husks he was feeding the swine began to look good to him. And still, nobody gave him anything. Finally, the boy came to his senses. At home, even my father's servants have enough food and to spare. And here I am starving to death. I will go home and ask my father to hire me as one of his servants. And so, he set off. Now he was still some distance from his home when his father saw him coming. And he was so filled with compassion that he ran towards his son and embraced him and kissed him. The boy said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and you. I am not worthy to be called your son. But his father called for the servants and said, Bring me the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Put rings on his hands and shoes on his feet. Kill the fatted calf. We must celebrate with a feast. My son was dead. And is alive again. Now, the older brother, at this time, was working in the fields. And as he came back to the house, he heard the noise of music and dancing. He called for one of the servants and asked what was happening. And he was told. At this, the older brother became very angry and he refused to go into the house. The father came out, tried to plead with him, but he wouldn't listen. I have worked for you all this time, all these years, and never once have I disobeyed you. And in all that time, you've never even given me so much as a goat so that I could have a feast with my friends. My younger brother comes back, having spent all your money on harlots, and for him you kill the fatted calf. Please, said the father. Please, try to understand. You are always with me. Everything I have is yours. But it is right to celebrate. Your brother was dead. And is alive again. He was lost. And is found. Forgive me, Master. I'm... I'm just a stupid man.
John. John. What is it you want from me? Is it just a matter of my violating the marriage vows? Is that it? Because I've a mind to repent that, John. Hmm? Will that satisfy you? Do you think it makes me happy to see you rotting away in the dark down there with a howling gang outside the bar? Why don't you listen to reason? There's work for you here in this wretched kingdom. If it's power you want, you can have power. Power to build, not to break. My task has been to prepare the way for the one who shall wear the crown. Who is this man, this prophet from Galilee? Is he the one I ought to be talking to? Do not fear the toppling of your throne. Before kingdoms change, men must change. Ah, you say that, yes. But I've been listening to those fools outside. What leaders intend and what their followers are after are not one and the same thing. That crowd of yours needs someone to control it. John, if I set you free, what would you do with your freedom? I would follow the one whose way I have prepared, just like many others who already follow him. But you will not set me free. of God is upon us. Release John. Yeah, send him away, send him away. Send him to Egypt, you're right. What harm can you do us there? After all. Yes? Tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow, on your birthday. What better present could you give to yourself and your people? A great gesture of clemency. <laughs> Once he was free and had gone to Egypt, he just might meet with us some unfortunate accident. <laughs> <laughs> what an imagination, my thing. How fast your thoughts travel. 
imagination. <laughs> you know I can always read your mind. Don't forget, I can read your mind too, my lord. <laughs> Harold. Hmm? What present shall I give you on your birthday? <laughs> what do you think I would like most? <laughs> Salome? <laughs> you see, I can read your mind. Do not think I have come to bring peace on earth. I've come not to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to sow discord between a man and his father, between a daughter and her mother, a man's enemies. will be members of his own family. You may say we have left our belongings to become your followers. I tell you this. Anyone who has left home, or father, mother, wife, children, land, for the kingdom of God, shall be rewarded a hundred times over on earth and inherit the kingdom of God. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But if a man will lose his life for my sake and for the gospel I bring you, he will save it. For many that are first will be last. And the last first. So do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where it grows rusty and moth-eaten and thieves break in to steal it. Store up treasure in heaven. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. My name is Jairus. I am one of the elders of the synagogue here. 
My little daughter is dying. I beg you, come and lay your hands on her so that she may be cured and live. Take me to her. Your daughter is dead. Do not weep. The child is not dead. Only sleeping. Who are you to come here with your jokes? We've seen that she's dead. You haven't. Peace, Thomas. Peace. Rise, little girl. something to eat. She's alive! She's alive! She's alive! Rabbi, I want to apologize. I didn't know who you were. I, I thought the child was dead. Well, she was dead. I saw her with my own eyes. Can't you believe without seeing, Thomas? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I think I know what I believe, but something happens. My mind gets blurred and I don't know. I doubt so much you must want to be certain. I do. Then follow me. You mean give up my work and... Yes. Jairus, will you give me your servant to be one of my disciples? With gladness, Master. I am happy for him.
Do you have doubts about following me, Thomas? No. I don't believe I have. <laughs> Why won't they listen? I told my wife I won't be away for long. In any case, the fishing's hopeless. Why not go away? I told her, I said, I'll come back in the spring. Don't lie to her. And to yourself. Lie? Yes. You know very well. You'll never go back. I will. No, you won't. Never. You'll never fish again. You'll never get drunk again. you'll never live in Capernaum again. None of us will. We'll never be the same. And neither will the lives of everyone in the whole world. We know why, Simon. First to know.
when I've danced, what will you give me? Whatever thou shalt ask of me, I will give to thee, unto the half of my kingdom. is going to dance. I want the head of the Baptist. Oh, no. You promised. Oh, no. Yes, you promised. You promised. Yes. Oh, no. You swore, my lord. Before. All your guests. Shall it be said that King Herod does not keep his promises?
anything, Herod. You no. said anything. Yes, you promised. Oh, no. Yes. No. You promised. A king will rule in righteousness. And princes will rule in justice. This way. Then the eyes of those that will not see will not be closed. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us? Who knoweth us? Oh, war unto them! War unto them! His head sheared off like a rabbit and given as a present to a dancing girl. Only by killing him could Herod hope to silence his voice. But I can still hear him. We must avenge him. Revenge? It's bad politics, my friend. Suppose we kill Herod. We'll replace him. I'll tell you. Another servant of Tiberius, a Roman procurator like Pontius Pilate. So what should we do then? Submit? Or become soldiers of Rome, like the Syrians or the Greeks? No. The Romans must know they can never rule Galilee with ease. Oh, I know that for the present we strike in the dark. But the time will come when God shall send us our leader, and then we shall make open war. You mean a real war? The people of Israel, alone, against the Roman Empire? Brothers, this is Judas Iscariot. I've asked him to talk to you. You should hear what he has to say about Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth? Do you know him? Oh, I have heard him preach many times. And I have seen the kind of power that he has. Is he the man to place our hopes on? Hmm? Well, why do you ask me this question? John answered it. Remember what the Baptist said? I bear witness that this is the man. Tell all my friends and disciples to follow him and proclaim in his name the kingdom of heaven. We know that. We know that. But could he be the one, priest and king, who lead our people Israel? Could he be the Messiah promised by our Lord? I believe that if one day the people of Israel do find a Messiah, oh yes, it will be him. But n no, I, I beg of you, let him fulfill his mission. That is my advice. I intend to follow him, and I hope, if he will accept me, become a disciple. Very well, Judas. Will you keep in touch with us, hmm? If you wish. Peace be on you, John. Though your blood cries out for revenge, may your soul find rest in the glory of the righteous. May peace be with you, John. Rest in peace, John. Eternal peace on your soul, John. May your soul find eternal rest. Peace be on you, John. Come on, come on, come on.
Since you came here, noise and filth, the curse of God is on you. <laughs> Don't worry, Mary. They're only boys' games. Ah, uh, the boys, they would only burn my house down. The fathers. They're all against me. <laughs> Not all, Mary. There's a friend of yours in town today. I have no friends. Oh, yes, you have. Jesus, the prophet. Friend of our caste, forgiver of sins. Hmm? Hey, according to him, the sins of the flesh are nothing compared to the sins of the soul. Hey. A man will always forgive a man, but a woman's sin. <laughs> That's another story. For most people, but not for him. I've never seen anybody like him. Have you seen him often? If you go around on business like me, you can't help seeing him. Turn a corner, cross a square, go into a cabin, there he is. Come on. It's been like that for about a year. You sure you haven't come across him? Oh, I sleep during the daytime, don't I? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Well, there are big crowds following him everywhere. Sometimes so big he has to sleep in the field. And he thinks nothing of eating and drinking with thieves and whores. <laughs> Any scum of the earth is good enough for him, eh? One of his disciples, as they call themselves, was a, was a tax collector, the thieving swine. But this Jesus... Well, he says... It's not the righteous that need him, it's the sinners. So you see? Yeah, I've got a friend. Hmm? Uh. What about next week? Oh. Joseph of Arimathea, one of the leading Pharisees in Jerusalem. Which of you, for all his worrying, can add one day to his life? 
one inch to his stature. So don't concern yourself so much with the means of life. What you shall eat and drink, or with your bodies, and how they should be clothed. Life is more than clothing. Consider the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, but our Heavenly Father feeds them. Will he not all the more feed you? Are you not worth more than they? Consider the lilies of the field. They do not spin. They do not weave. But not even Solomon in all his glory was so arrayed as one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not all the more clothe you, who have so little faith? Therefore, do not ask, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? How shall we dress ourselves? It is only the faithless who set their hearts on these things. You must first seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness and everything will be added freely unto you. So do not be anxious about tomorrow. Tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Let the day's own trouble be sufficient for the day. <laughs> Extraordinary. But isn't that taking it too far? Huh? Well, surely our religion isn't opposed to honest, hard work. Much of what he says has been said by the prophets, but not like this. I agree with you. But we can't be sure until we meet with him face to face. Why not invite him to eat with us? Hmm. Would he come? I'm sure he would. Such a man must be willing to discuss his ideas with people who are open-minded. Master, what must I do to have eternal life? Go and sell all you have and give it to the poor and you shall have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Sell everything. Everything I own. Everything my father slaved for. Everything. You cannot serve two masters. God and money. You see, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God.
Master, may I speak with you? What is your name, my son? My name is Judas Iscariot. Well, call me a scholar the state finds useful. I read and write Hebrew, Greek, Latin. I, I translate documents. This has become a country of many tongues. Now, I have never beaten copper, nor carved wood, nor caught fish as your men have, but I know your men. My father was a prosperous builder who said, my son must never have calluses on his hands, no brick dust in his hair. My money must make my son into a scholar. Well, behold, a scholar who wishes to serve you. Do you need a man like me? The tree is known by its fruit. Stay with us. 